If you are new to trading or you are new to smart money concepts in general, this episode is going to be an eye opener for you. What we're talking about now is liquidity. What I have marked on the chart to start this session off are three different examples of basic retail patterns. I want you to have a think about what you see when you look at each of these. Most traders, most new traders and most retail traders are going to see here a range breakout and they would look to trade the range breakout by waiting for a retest of the resistance turn support and buy from there. The second one is a double top. We get two equal highs in the market and most traders are actually looking to sell once we break this level, which retail traders know as a neckline. So sell orders are going to be triggered there to continue the market down. The third and final diagram that we have marked on is a trend line retest and then a trend line break. To trade a trend line break, traders generally look for a trend line to be broken like so. And then when the market retests that trend line, they sell into the market, expecting it to move all the way down to form a new trend. The problem is all of these rarely work. Most of the time, we are not going to get a clean break retest like this. Most of the time, a double top is completely going to wipe traders out. And most of the time, a trend line break does not actually signify any change in the real trend. That may be a shock if you are into these retail concepts. And if you've been trying to learn through this perspective, using chart patterns like double tops, trend lines, range breakouts and retests to actually trade, it can be a shock to find out that they're all pretty useless. And you may not even believe it to start with. But let me break it down. So in the market, we have two types of participants. We have retail and we have institutional. I am not a believer, or at least I'm not an advocate for this whole game where the institutional traders are like trying to take retail traders out and are trying to, you know, trick retail traders and deceive them. Um, I am not really a big believer in that because there's absolutely no evidence towards that. But I do know that the institutional orders are much, much bigger than retail orders. And for institutional orders to be triggered, they need a lot of retail traders to actually provide the liquidity or provide the orders. OK, so basically the market moves on liquidity and to enter a trade, you need someone on the other side of it. So if you enter a buy, there is always a seller the other side of the trade. So when you win, someone else loses. And when you lose, someone else is winning. That is how the market works. We are selling and buying currency contracts or assets to each other. And, you know, some people profit and some people lose on each transaction. So as you can imagine, if a retail trader wants to sell a certain amount of assets with millions of other retail traders around the world, they can normally cover that no problem. But when you're talking billion dollar orders or multi-billion dollar orders, or even in the hundreds of millions of dollars orders, you're going to need a lot of orders available to actually enter your whole position. So let's say you want to sell, you know, $100,000 into a market. There's always going to be someone on the other side of that $100,000 if you're trading the Forex markets. However, if you want to sell $1 billion, you have to find $1 billion worth of buyers to take on those orders. What this means is the market has to move to areas that orders are sitting within. And these areas are the liquidity areas. So if we go back to these and focus on what we spoke about with the retail methods, the basic retail methods that we're looking at here, what can we think about the retail concepts? Well, most education teaches us to buy support with a stop under the low or sell resistance with a stop under the low. So let's say then the first example, when we hit this point, we can see a resistance point continually being met. We know for a fact there are going to be sell traders holding short positions like so. OK, and they'll be looking to, you know, wait for the new breakout, wait for the new break of trend. So we're going to get sellers here. They may make some money. We're also going to get sellers the next time the resistance is tapped. And what this means is the stop losses are going to be above the high because this is just basic retail education. This is something we all know is true. Now, as well as this, we are also going to have breakout traders. Some breakout traders will use what we call buy stops, which is basically an order that directly triggers you into the market when price moves over a certain level. And the other traders will be looking for a break and retest. So they will be entering around these levels. Now, the problem is these retail traders essentially get tricked because they don't understand this concept of liquidity. So if we know that there are a bunch of buy orders sitting here and there are a bunch of buy orders sitting here and there are also a bunch of buy orders on these shorts, because if you think about a sell trade, the stop loss is essentially a buyback price. We sell the market here. If the market hits this level, the orders are automatically rebought at a loss. So we have a bunch of buy orders in this point. 
If an institutional player wants to drop a large short order on a sell order, they need to clear up all of this buy side liquidity to open all of these stops, all of these buys and all of these buys to actually allow them to get their short order on. OK, they need to draw in a lot of liquidity to actually allow the size of their position. If they want to sell, you know, five hundred million dollars, they can do it in intervals. But to really get all of the position on, they're going to need to free up a lot of liquidity. So what will often happen in the market is we come through the high. We stop out those sellers, we enter the breakout traders, we enter the retest traders. But what often happens instead of that clear drive that retail traders want to see is a collapse like so. And you may have seen this happen before and you may see it as a fake out or a false breakout. But really, all of this has real logic behind it. Liquidity. So if this comes as a shock, that's understandable. Basically finding out that the concepts you know are the opposite of what you should be doing and where you're looking to buy is where institutional participants and people who hop on the back of the institutional participants are actually looking to sell. Now, this is what I do. OK, I don't agree with people when they say trade like the banks or they trade like a bank. Nobody really knows how banks trade except banks. And to be honest, they most likely just use algorithms like most hedge funds and most large institutional firms. But the thing is, regardless of how they trade, we know that this happens. We know that the market pushes through liquidity because we know that institutional participants need to get large orders on. So what we can do is generally just look to follow that regardless of how they're actually trading in terms of technical analysis or robots or anything like that. We can just piggyback on the back of the movements. And we understand that when we get resistance points like this, more often than not, we're going to get a push through the resistance point and then a big sell off, not a push through the resistance point and then a retest and then another move up. OK, so what we can actually do is wait for this kind of formation to happen and then we can sell it in this area. Now, there are a few ways we do this. It comes in line with supply and demand and inefficiency. I will show you this on a live example in a moment. But first of all, let's take a look at these other two. So the second example here is a double top. Now, most of the time when a trader sees this formation, they are going to sell the market. Okay, So we've seen one high uh, you know, support, another high and then a break of that support. And what this shows us is that there's a resistance point here which is stopping the market. Okay, Or at least that's what most people think. They see, OK. This level here is strong. The market can't get past it. I'm going to sell. So what does that do? Well, that brings in once again, the breakout traders here. It also brings in anyone who sold in the highs here. And it also is going to bring out any retest traders that have orders on at this level now waiting for a retest to sell into. So now we have a bunch of people in the market here. We have the instant sellers and we have sellers all the way up here. And what is often going to happen from this point in a double top formation is something like this. Now, this can be very frustrating and you may think, oh, I don't know why this has happened. Market manipulation, blah, blah, blah. But really what it's doing is going and collecting those orders. So once again, in the same manner as this, if institutional participants want to sell a market, they need to free up some orders. So what they can do here is so what happens here is we get pushed through the neckline. All of these traders are triggered into sells. Then they are closed out by a small push up. That adds a bunch of buying pressure into the market, which drives the market all the way up here. And then all of the double top sellers get took out. That liquidity is freed up and institutional players can put on those large orders, which gives the real drive down in the market. So double tops, much like the break and retests, should not be trusted. And it's the same for double bottoms, but obviously flipped on its head a little bit like this. So now we're looking at trend lines, and this is one of the biggest players in liquidity. Loads of people trade trend lines. Even if you don't trust double tops and double bottoms, most people actually indicate trends using trend lines. But as you'll actually know when I go over it now, using what we learned in the structure video and supply and demand video, a break of a trend line does not actually mean a break of a trend. So if we look at this disregarding the trend line, we can actually see two breaks of structure. We have the first break of structure here showing we're in an uptrend. We have a second break of structure here showing we are still in an uptrend. So the trend line is going to be a problem because when the trend line is broken like this, people think the trend has shifted. So they think the market will retest this level and then sell off. Problem here is we haven't broken structure whatsoever. If we focus on the price lines, which is this line here and not a trend line, which if you think about it is literally an imaginary line that someone's pictured in their head and drawn on the chart. If we focus on the real price, we can see that the market is still intact, forming higher highs and higher lows. 
So if we just grab these little tools and figure the demand zones out on the chart. So by plotting a demand zone on the chart here, we can see that even though the trend line has broken and been retested, which is where a lot of people will be looking to sell, we have indeed only just seen the market come into an entry point. So what we will have is a lot of people selling this area to bring the market down. We also will have a lot of people selling this break, thinking this is a confirmation trade. But what we can clearly and very, very easily see is that where these people are selling, we are only just coming into a high probability buy zone. Why is that? Because we are still in a bullish trend, higher high, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. And the trend line doesn't really tell us anything at all about the market structure. So where these guys are selling, we will actually be looking for buys. And that is going to give us an edge because this is where the orders are at. Okay, the orders are sitting in here in an imbalanced demand zone in a bullish trend. And obviously with all of that sell side liquidity, there are loads of sell orders going on here. So if we consider the shorts that are on, we have sell orders with stop losses, potentially a stop loss over the high. Sometimes the stop loss is going to be closer on breakout trades. But basically we have a lot of sellers actually looking to get into the market. Now, as we spoke about previously, so when we run a sell move, the stop loss for the sell move is a buyback. So if price hits that stop loss level, we will automatically buy back at a loss, okay? Now, what happens when we buy back? That injects more buying pressure into the market because we are exchanging basically selling pressure for buying pressure. So what happens in trades like this is we trade into the demand zone and a lot of buying orders are collected in this demand zone. And what that's then going to do is push the market up. And when it pushes it through the retail traders sell orders, pushes it through their stop losses, that's going to inject more buying pressure into the market, which is then going to trigger more stop losses. And that's going to drive the market into a new high. So trend lines are a really, really bad thing, in my opinion, because they draw a lot of traders in by teaching them this bad concept, when really you should just be following the structure. If you remove the trend line, it becomes clear as day what we should be doing here. But just because there is an invisible line drawn on the chart that someone decided to plot on, they're actually going completely the wrong direction and selling into what should be a very, very clear buying area. So I've just broken down liquidity on double tops, on break and retest ranges, and on trend lines. And now I think we should go and look at this in real market environments. And I actually am going to refer back to the Euro USD trade that we looked at in the previous video because when you see it again with the concepts of liquidity brought in, you'll see how much clarity that trade has and how that trade fits the system so very well that it's just a super, super easy trade to take. Running back to the trade we showed in the previous video about imbalances, I'm now going to show you how the liquidity comes into this. Now, the first thing to do when identifying liquidity is to actually just get an eye for the market the same way that a retail trader would look at the market. Obviously, we are retail traders, but we are not using these basic retail concepts like chart patterns and trend lines. But what you need to do to build a good picture of where the liquidity is, is build that vision and look at the markets as if you are using those concepts. So look for double bottoms, look for double tops, look for trend lines at trend line breaks and retests, all of these different things. This is going to help you build an eye for where the liquidity is in the market. So on this EURUSD position then, well, what can we see? We can see that we have a triple top as we covered in the previous video. So seeing a triple top like this to us is a good indication that the market actually may push through this and builds confluence for our trade and actually gives us more confidence that the market is going to come and fulfill the zone that we want to see. The other thing is the trend line. We can see here that we have these three lows that move up. So we could draw a trend line on there and see what it is the retail traders are expecting to see. Now, when I see this movement happen, which is a trend line break, I see here a trend line break trade and a triple top. So for many, this is going to be an amazing setup. Retail traders will see this and think this is a picture perfect setup. We've had a triple top followed by a trend line break. So what we could do now is look towards this support point for our selling opportunities because we've now broken that support as well. So this is gonna be like a textbook trade for a lot of retail traders. But what we can actually see is, okay, this is trend line liquidity. This is triple top liquidity. So we have liquidity here. We have liquidity here under the trend line and we have liquidity in this area as well where these orders are now being triggered. So then what we can do is go ahead, put our order on as we did using the demand zone, which was down here in the low. And we get 
a profitable trade, regardless of the fact that all of these basic retail patterns are pointing to the downside. So liquidity, as you can see, is used to help formulate a setup. We don't use liquidity as a leading indication for any trades, but we do use it to identify areas that price is likely to trade from and likely to trade to. It helps us build a stronger vision of the market and also instills confidence in our trades. Now, confidence is very, very important in successful trading. If you're not confident, you're not going to be trading well, and therefore you're not going to have good results. It's going to lead you to close trades early and it leads to a lot of psychological problems. Having the extra confidence that this liquidity method brings by being able to read and understand the liquidity and where the orders are and where the market is likely to go, not only does it improve your technical skills and actually build a better formulated trade for you, it's going to boost your confidence as well, which is equally as important as technicals when it comes down to executing, managing and holding out trades to their full potential. So to recap liquidity, we are looking for basic retail patterns, support, resistance, trend lines, trend line breaks and retests, double tops, double bottoms, triangle patterns, flags, all of these things. If you don't know about them, just head over to Google and literally Google search retail chart patterns or Forex chart patterns. Go on Google Images. You're going to find pictures with all of these things on. And basically what you need to do is then bring that vision to the live markets, find these setups in the live markets and things that retail traders will be looking for and then work out where the liquidity is around those. We don't actually trade using those chart patterns because most of the time they're not going to work, but we use them within our system to actually find the likely areas for price to push through, price to push into, trades to be triggered, and generally build confidence and a better idea of where the market is likely to go for our own personal trades.